Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So, um, today we have something special. This is a new, brand new to the market GPS quadcopter from FUAV, and it's the Serafi, Serafi model. Not sure exactly how to pronounce it, but it's from FUAV company, and uh, this is a review model that uh, I was sent by GearBest.com. I will have the links down in the description of where you can pick this guy up if you're interested. But anyway, um, what we're doing today is, uh, I know the, the view is a little bit uh, different than usual, but since the box is so big, um, this is kind of where I do all my reviewing and mods and tutorials and setups on all of my um, quadcopters and remote control stuff for my YouTube channel. So I thought it would be kind of interesting for you guys to kind of see the setup here. It's still in the in progress. It's still under development. Um, I've been slowly kind of expanding it while I've been doing more and more with reviews and stuff. So here it is uh, to the right. Basically just have a couple of Costco tables in the corner of my garage here set up. And it's kind of a mess right now. It's really sorry about that. but. Uh, it's kind of what I have to work with uh, as far as the space goes in the house and um, we'll be slowly kind of building more shelving and uh, kind of making it a little nicer and uh, upgrading the filming equipment and stuff but what we're going to be doing for for this review here is I'm going to be having the hat cam on with my microphone kind of the same hat, hat cam I do for my in-flight video at the park and stuff just going to unbox it and kind of set it up uh, get it out of the box with this hat cam video and then we're going to move to um, the more high definition Canon camera on its little tripod and do kind of more in-depth a closer look and set up with it once it's out of the box so anyway to start off with uh, this is what you get it in this is the box and um, just kind of has a little handle on top here and then the other side is just basically a front view of the Serafi really excited to reviews that review this this is basically like a phantom style quadcopter uh, it's got the GPS it's um, lithium polymer powered 3s lithium polymer powered brushless with brushless motors and uh, really excited to to see what this one can do this model I got here comes with a brushless gimbal I think it's a two-dimensional gimbal so we'll be able to mount up like a GoPro style cam on this. But as you can see just from the box, um, the actual craft is uh, looks kind of like a Phantom, but it's the styling is a little more lower profile. It's got that kind of a uh, uh, squished look to it. So let's go ahead and take this thing out of the box and see what it's all about. Okay, so from a top-down box view, basically uh, everything is kind of all tucked away nicely in here. And here's the controller, just getting it out of the box. It looks like uh, from the initial pictures I saw, um, I didn't see this switch on the top here. So I have a thread on this on rcgroups.com, and I will be updating that as well. So if you wanted to uh, check that out, I'll have the link down in the description on the rcgroups.com thread for the Serafi also. Uh, so you can follow that. That's the controller there. Again, once I get this all out of the box, we'll switch to a better camera and we'll have uh, close-up shots and we'll go through all of the controls and stuff. So here's the top of the quad itself. I'm just going to take kind of everything else out around it first. We have, uh, looks like a power cord and then a charging adapter. This looks like this will be the charger. It looks like a pretty good quality um, charger they're, they're giving with this one. You can choose between a few different amperages and between a life and a lipo battery. So that's great. So this is all the charging stuff it comes with here. And it looks like this is the uh, manual and some other materials. We've got some screws, a wrench, and some other stuff we'll also go over once we get it all out of the box. And these guys are great. They give us a full set of propeller guards and they're really big. So for those of you that are still learning quads or just want to be safe and not ruin your propellers or help you um, in crashes, that's great that they give you a full set of propeller guards. I haven't really seen any recent quads like this give you a full set in the box. So that's great. 
and then what's wow okay so these guys are giving us another set of landing gear as well so not only does it have a full set of landing gear on the quad already but they're also giving us a uh, extra set just in case you have a hard landing and and break them you've got a whole new set there and that's unusual as well that's that's uh, I'm kind of liking this company so far so I'm gonna pull the quad out here just to get these I guess this is the propellers okay so let's just check out this really quick one two three four five six oh neat okay that's great so they're giving us a whole set of propellers plus two extra ones um, usually straight out of the box these kind of large quadcopters only give uh, four the ones that uh, it can fly with so that's great these guys give you two extra ones so so far so good it looks like they're really paying attention to what you know the new owner of one of these is really going to going to want as far as um, giving you a couple extra things if you do crash it so that's great so taking the serefi out of the box we've got this little foam box on the bottom let's slide that off and it looks like that's everything everything that's included in the box I'm going to move this box to the side and before we switch to the other camera I'll just go ahead and uh, take a quick look at it with this hat cam so here it is the FUAV Serafi GPS quadcopter and we can see here it's got a looks like a 2D gimbal yep so two points of access we got this one and then we got this one here so it looks like it's going to hold a GoPro style camera which I have and I'm currently under review the SJ5000X action cam which I'm going to put in here and this is the um, elite version which has the gyro inside of it which I'm also currently in review of so this will be great I'll put this in here and we'll have some nice uh, we'll probably try some 4k footage this thing does 4k so we'll probably try some 4k as well as um, like 1080p and all that kind of different resolutions to test that out but basically just gonna quickly go over this before I switch to the other camera uh, looks like we have the gimbal here and we have the gimbal mount here with this kind of plug sticking out everything looks pretty well put together it's definitely a neat look it's got that low profile looking look that's it looks like it's going to have a uh, pretty good wind aerodynamics if wind is coming from kind of across if crosswinds are coming and um, just kind of twisting the arm here this lateral brace structure this wide structure it's making it really rigid on the arm so that's great um, usually these kinds of gps quadcopters are when you twist the arm like this usually they really can twist and don't have much rigidity to them so this is great that this one uh, is really constructed well it seems so let me go ahead and switch to the other camera so we can get some better uh, a better nice high resolution view of this thing okay so here we go here it is so we've got the um, the other camera on it now and just gonna kind of go over closely what everything is all about so we did see the landing gear previously the extra pair of landing gear so that's great to give that in the box and then um, the four sets of prop guards are the four prop guards they're giving us uh, really impressed with how much extra stuff these guys are giving us in the box I'm just taking a little bit of a closer look at the charger we can see that it's got um, multiple charging amperages here. We can switch to three different amperages, one, two, and three. And then uh, it also does life batteries and LiPo batteries. And then it also does up to 4S, so from 1S to 4S. And this is where we're gonna be plugging in our wall adapter to that side. And then they give us this other little um, dongle here. So this is gonna plug in right to this section here these two plugs and then this will plug in to charge the battery so let's see what kind of battery we get in this so taking a look at the battery door here uh, it's got this sticker over the 
tab on the door that says please do a horizontal calibration before your first flight as shown in the quick start guide. So definitely going to want to calibrate the compass initially before you do any kind of flying. Okay, so anyway, undoing the battery door, it looks like we're just pushing down on this tab here and then pulling the door. And there we go. So that's revealing the battery. So let's pull out the battery. You can see these um, Dean's connectors here. And there's something else coming out here. So here's the battery and curiously, we've got some black thing Oh, okay, this looks like it's the uh, US, micro USB input. So that's interesting. They just kind of have it hanging out here. So that's actually promising. It looks like uh, we can probably connect this to the computer and uh, access the flight control software. So we'll be researching that as well. But anyway, here's the battery. So it's saying it's an 11.1 .1 volt, which would be 3S and a 5200 mAh uh, lithium polymer LiPo battery. So interesting shape here. You can see that it's kind of this uh, rectangular flat lower profile square shape with uh, the Dean's connector on uh, this end and then it's got the 3S balancer on this end. And so on the balance charger they give you, you'd be plugging uh, the balance end here and then uh, the Dean's connector would be plugging into uh, this other Dean's plug here. So anyway, that's the battery compartment. Uh, just pretty plain and Jane. You just have that micro S USB cable kind of hanging around. It's kind of a, I'm not sure I'm really too happy with that. Would have been kind of neat if they just had maybe like a little uh, notch in the body with this kind of just recessed in here. So uh, this thing wasn't just flopping around inside. I could see how maybe that um, would be a nuisance. But anyway, uh, that's the battery and the battery compartment. So moving on, we can see that kind of pr low profile look to it. We're just kind of turning it here. We can see how it's uh, really low profile this way. And then it looks like the um, engineering on this is pretty interesting. They went for more of a uh, spread out arm, which is really rigid. I can't even barely move the arm here. It's not even barely going side to side. So that's good. It looks, looks like it's going to be really rigid. And then um, it looks like uh, maybe this ridge here in the middle was for structural integrity and also uh, for, for the wind when the props are pushing down and um, pushing wind down on the arm for less wind resistance. It has this kind of aerodynamic uh, ridge to it so the arm can cut through the wind. And then uh, kind of getting to the back here, it looks like we have a LED light kind of recessed. It uh, looks like a high powered one in the back there. And then on the bottoms of each motor, we do have these LED lights as well. So these are recessed on the bottom here. Pretty nicely done. Now we can see the screws for taking apart the arm. So, so far the design looks pretty interesting, pretty well done. And so just flipping it over, taking a look at the, um, the gimbal here, we can see that it is a two axis gimbal. It's gonna give us a uh, camera pitch for up and down and also uh, it'll it's going to do the roll automatically side to side so we're going to be able to control this movement to pitch our camera from forward to looking at the uh, ground and then uh, this motion will be automatic just to stabilize the roll of the camera in flight unfortunately this one doesn't have any uh, third access I think they're going to be coming out with a gimbal that has a third axis, which will stabilize the um, the yaw here or the the pan of the camera. And uh, so I might end up going ahead and getting something like that, or maybe mounting a different gimbal as well. But we're definitely going to see how this performs in the flight video with that SJ 5000 X Elite Cam for sure. See how that performs. But anyway, it's really pretty. That's for sure. Got this nice chrome looking. Uh, encased motors here and then everything looks pretty well the fit and finish looks really nice we've got these four um, rubber ball dampeners that the gimbal's hanging from this is probably the casing for the 3d gimbal but they're just putting a 2d gimbal in it right now because it looks like it's empty in there it looks like it's just hollow 
and there's a couple of ports here we can look into it and then all there is is this wire kind of coming out to uh, looks like power the gimbal and then power the signal wire for the gimbal so we got positive negative and signal there Then on the bottom here we can see these vents it looks like these are kind of the only vents it has for cooling so it should be a pretty efficient craft usually there's usually these uh, quadcopters like this they usually have some kind of vents on the top but um, who knows maybe the air is coming in through around the motor when the propellers are pushing the air through and it's venting out to the bottom that would be a pretty good design if it if it does that it'll be interesting to see how the compass performs if in fact the compass must be inside the craft somewhere close to the electronics usually you want to have it away from the electronics so there's no interference but we'll see how this one performs definitely in the flight testing let's go ahead and see what we get in the instruction bag here okay so we're getting a quick start guide uh, nice color pictures here looks like this is Chinese and then we have English on the other side so here we go we got a quick start guide it's gonna go through everything how to set it up here are the compass calibrations down here on the bottom left how to calibrate everything how to calibrate the compass with the controls how to do arming and all that kind of stuff so looks like a pretty well done little quick start guide and then we also get it looks like uh, the G2 they're calling it the G2 gimbal looks like a little pamphlet specifically for the gimbal which is great because usually um, crafts like this don't include economical crafts like this don't include um, little pamphlets like this specifically for the gimbal so that's great so we're seeing how to mount up the camera how to initialize it and uh, this looks like the pitch button here to the pitch knob for the camera to go up and down and then we're getting a little bag here with a bunch of extra screws so in case you lose some screws looks like you've got some extra as well as it looks like these prop guards are going to take um, two screws each to mount up and it looks like on the bottom here these two empty screw holes are going to be where you're going to want to mount up the prop guards there and that's the allen wrench to access all of the the allen screws including the gimbal allen screws and then this little wrench here I'm not sure what this is I guess maybe uh, doesn't really look like this is gonna fit on here so I'm not really sure what this wrench is for maybe it's just kinda to hold this portion if you're having a hard time with the propellers which I would um, kind of recommend not doing that because if you do put like a metal to metal on this you'll end up chewing up um, this stuff so just try it out when you do spin on the propellers try to um, just do it by hand they are self tightening which will go through right now after this so that's the baggie of goodies there you get in the in the box and then this is looks like the full user manual it's saying 1.0 so it's kind of a really thick page material it's just going through it's just going through everything you get in the box uh, real basic and then it looks like half of its Chinese and the first few pages are English so it's only really three pages pretty basic I think they're mainly relying on the um, the quick startup user guide here to to get you started flying so definitely take a look at that but anyway mounting the props up here's the propellers you get in the box two counterclockwise two clockwise and then one counterclockwise and one clockwise extra propeller just in case you break one so that's really good I'm really happy with these guys that they did that four would have been nice but two is definitely better than no extras okay and the way we're mounting the propellers up is you're gonna see kinda of this arrow here and that's indicating the way the motors are gonna spin so they're gonna spin this way on this arm and uh, what you wanna make sure of so this would be a counterclockwise spinning motor so it's going to be spinning counterclockwise that way and you just want to make sure that the top edge of the propeller is spinning the same direction as this little arrow circle here so this one would go on this one and since it's going to be spinning that way when it's flying uh, it's going to be tightening this way so you should just be able to spin that on go ahead and uh, kind of push it 
give it a little extra push with your fingers and you really should only need it like slightly finger tight and that's ready to go so you just do that on all four all four corners so it also has an arrow here on the propeller itself showing which way the propeller is going to spin when the craft is in use and so as long as this arrow does match the arrow on the arm there's really no way you can screw this thing up so uh, when you are loosening it you're going to want to go the opposite way so this was going to be a counterclockwise and it just spins right off so pretty interesting propellers just taking kind of a closer look at these propellers they do look like they're they are nine inch propellers very similar to the phantom but phantom propellers are kind of wider in the beginning and taper off more at the end so these ones kind of have the largest portion here in the middle and then they're um, a little bit uh, wider at the end and just a little more bullnose right at the end here so interesting design and we'll see how that works in the flight test okay so it looks like it will this bar will fit this SG, SJ cam but it's going to be a little tight you have to take the bar all the way off and then you have to uh, push it on since the SJ cam kind of has this soft touch soft touch rubber finish to it you have to um, take it all the way off and then push it on here okay so just lining up the bolt holes I'm just going to kind of start the threads a little bit so they go straight in and then kind of uh, move this thing around and mount it up see what works so there we go looks like we're mounted up pretty good you just got to kind of play with this aluminum plate and uh, move it around to see whatever matches your camera but it looks like it's gonna um, it's going to accept a lot of different GoPro style cameras as long as the height of the camera here is not higher than this this was this actually had to push on a little bit tight but um it seems like it's going to hold it in nice and tight on this one to arm the motors you're just pulling both sticks in once everything is on and ready, you're ready to fly uh, you're pulling both sticks to the bottom left and right like this and then that will basically get the propellers to start spinning and then you're ready for takeoff you can either just take off like by pushing the throttle stick up and take off or it also has this uh, this little this little switch up here is actually the auto takeoff switch I thought it was like a return to home switch but apparently it's the auto takeoff switch is what they're saying so if you want to do auto takeoff and you don't want to just push the controller up you just make sure this this is in uh, GPS mode and then you're it's saying you're gonna switch this switch back and forth once whether it's in the up position you're gonna go back and forth or if it's in the down position you're gonna go back and forth and that should initiate the auto takeoff and also this will also do an auto landing so if you're hovering over your landing zone and you go like this back and forth it should land and then when you do take off what it's saying also is that LED light on the back of the craft uh, before you take off if it is doing a double blink that means you can take off in the attitude mode which is I guess the non GPS mode for manual flight so you can take off in that if you're seeing a double flash on the back of the craft LED light and then if you are in GPS mode before you take off um, if you're seeing a single flash that means there's enough GPS signal to go ahead and take off and then as far as all these other buttons uh, this would be your pitch button for your gimbal well, obviously to point your gimbal your camera up and down while you're flying and I actually do like this position of this it looks like you can control it with one finger back and forth so if you are flying and uh, going forward or rolling left and right or backwards you can actually still at simultaneously go ahead and pitch your camera up or down while you're flying unfortunately it's looking like this doesn't have any specific return to home button like a lot of the other crafts I've recently reviewed have um, these GPS crafts and that's a little that's that's kind of too bad it looks like you it will go into a return to return to home mode if it loses connection like if you go out of range it will automatically start coming back home and you won't be able to control it until you go ahead and click this up down up or down up down a couple times and then that will regain control if it does become come back into range of the transmitter you can regain your control of it so just keep that in mind if you do fly out beyond um, control or if you do shut off your transmitter 
or it loses some kind of uh, power on your transmitter, it should automatically go into the return to home sequence and then it should come down and land. But if you do turn your controller back on and it's within range, you will have to do this triple click to um, regain control with your controller. This kind of reminds me of the Cheerson CX-20. I've done a lot of videos on the Cheerson CX-20 and it does seem like this has the same process. I am kind of thinking that this may have the 3DR Arducopter flight control software in it. So that'll be interesting if it's similar to like the CX-20 um, open source software. There's going to be a lot of parameters you change. You can change. So that'll be interesting. I'll have another video on actually if I can get it to connect with that and change some parameters. I will definitely have another video up soon um, showing the process of connection and uh, all you can do with changing the parameters and which flight control software works with this. And then basically for landing, um, this is this is similar to the X380 where it's a spring-loaded throttle stick. So when you let off the throttle stick and it's in its middle position, the craft should just hover there. I'm not sure if the attitude mode does use the barometer for altitude hold. We'll have to see that in the flight video. But the GPS mode, it should be when you do have the stick off, it should just hover there and be locked in its position as long as the GPS signal is good. But what it's saying in the instructions is actually once you're done flying, of course you've got your throttle up and down, your yaw left and right, your pitch forward and back, and your pitch, your roll left and right on this these sticks. You got all your trim buttons for these said functions. And then if you want to come down and land, you can either be hovering over your landing point and do the double switch on this one, and it should come down and auto land. Or you can just pull down on the throttle land it and then to um, disarm the motors you're going to have to pull them to the outer bottom limits like this and that should shut off the motors so i'm going to do a quick power up and so on the back of the controller here just basically it's taking uh, four AA batteries and it does have this little um, this little servo type plug here so it looks like you will be able to put in say if you want to put a lipo battery in there that fits in here um, you can definitely change this out for like a lipo battery or a life battery. Yeah, so the door is definitely um, shutting in there nice and tight. When the batteries are in, it's not, it looks like it's not going to definitely not going to fall off. So it looks like there's a trainer port here on the back of the controller. It doesn't come with a trainer cable, but um, I assume if you wanted to, you could go ahead and get a trainer cable. And we got a nice sturdy handle here for holding the controller. So that's the controller. Let's go ahead and uh, just put the battery in real quick and really quickly just do a power up and see if the, um, the gimbal works. So just moving all the stuff to the side, slipping in the, the battery and then um, this is that micro USB cable that's kind of hanging around. Just want to make sure you push that kind of in first and then um, you're going to want to probably power this thing up on a level surface. So if you are going to be launching and uh, doing any kind of calibration or work, make sure, make sure it's on a level desk or something. So powering the quad on, and I'm kind of just watching, watching the gimbal, hearing some beeps. Turning the controller on. You can see how the gimbal is slowly leveling itself. So there it goes. Okay, cool. So it just leveled itself. It looks like it's kind of going through through its leveling sequence. All right, so here's our pitch control. So let me go ahead and close this up so we can see the gimbal a little better. Okay, so looking at the gimbal and going ahead and using this right knob here, and I'm turning it to the right. And it looks like the um, the camera is pitching down. So it looks like when you get to kind of a certain extent, it's going to get a little bit sensitive. So you can see I'm kind of rolling it slowly. And then it's initializing now to um, pitch the gimbal down. So it's very sensitive. So hopefully maybe we can change that in the flight controller software. I'll have another video on um, if I can connect this to a computer and adjust some of the flight control parameters. 
I'll have another video so make sure you watch out for that video if possible. And it looks like it will be possible because there is that micro USB plug in there in the battery compartment. So we can see how I'm just turning this right to pitch it all the way down and so it does like a full 90 and then I'm pitching back up. So that's great. So the pitch is working awesome. You just have to let it initialize and it looks like it's having no problem keeping that um, keeping that camera level. We can see I'm going forward and all over the place and it's keeping it nice and level so there shouldn't be any problem there. Alright guys so in the flight video what I will do is I'll go ahead and have the uh, I'll do the compass calibration before I fly it. That should be really the only thing you need to do before you fly this thing. Just make sure your battery is fully charged. So that was basically the unboxing, the setup, and initial look at the FUAV Serafi GPS quadcopter. So definitely stay tuned for the other video, the flight test video of this. And then I'll have one more video, kind of a pros and cons, uh, back on the bench. Just kind of like how this one was, uh, back on this bench here to do a final pros and cons of what I thought about it and uh, I'm gonna probably do a lot of mod videos on this I usually have to mods on these types of quads to see how far we can push them with range mods and FPV mods and stuff so definitely um, if you're into this kind of stuff definitely take a look at my channel I do a lot of stuff like this let's go test this thing out let's go get some hat cam video of how it flies let's also get some onboard video of how good this gimbal stabilizes uh, the camera and also how good this SJ5000X cam is. This one has the gyro stabilization inside of it so that should be pretty interesting to see how that performs on this quadcopter. And this camera was also from GearBest.com so I'd recommend that uh, for, the, for the Serafi here this one and also the SJ5000X cam Ultimate Edition. Uh, they do have them on their uh, gearbest.com store and I'll have the links down in the description of where you can pick all this stuff up so definitely check that out if you guys are interested in this stuff so anyway guys thanks for watching and I will see you in the flight test <music>